All right, so um, just to catch people up here. So we're talking about, right, these ratios. So what we're going to do now is we're just by taking a ratio of the different sides of the triangle, we're going to, you know, figure out what our sine, cosine, and tangent are. All right, so I was talking about how to label a triangle. We label a triangle using capital letters for the vertices. And now each of the sides, okay, gets a lowercase letter. And the way it works is this. If this is angle A, then the side opposite to it is little a. And if this is angle B, then the side opposite to it is little b. This way, it doesn't matter really which angles you label as A, B, or C, but it does matter. Just stay consistent with that um, each opposite side has the corresponding letter, okay? All right, so here's how these ratios work. The first ratio is sine. In order to find these trig ratios, what you have to do is you have to focus on one of your angles. So what we're going to do is we're going to pick our angle A here, okay? That's going to be our angle that we're focusing on. And which one you're going to focus on really depends on the problem that you're solving. So right now we're focusing on this angle A. Now, this is a right triangle. It means one of these sides is, a, is the hypotenuse, right? Which one is the hypotenuse? C. This is the hypotenuse. Now, that leaves us two other sides, which are the legs of the triangle, right? Now, of the two legs, one of the legs is adjacent to A, and the other one is opposite to A. So, of A and B, which one is opposite angle A? A is opposite, right? So, this is called the opposite side. That means this is the adjacent side. All right, so opposite and adjacent are for, are for the legs only because the other one is the hypotenuse and it's always the hypotenuse no matter wh which way you look at the triangle. Now, so the first thing you do is you identify your angle, you label the sides, and then we can move on. Yeah. So if this is angle A, this one is the hypotenuse no matter what. That leaves us two legs, leg A and leg B. If we're focused on angle A, of these two legs, the one that's not touching it, this one is the opposite leg, okay? All right, once we've identified opposite and adjacent, we can go ahead and take our ratios. So suppose I wanted to compare the side of I'm sorry, the size of the opposite side to the hypotenuse. So if I say, okay, what's the ratio of the opposite side to the hypotenuse? That's called sine of A. So if you wanted to find sine of A, all you do is you say, okay, what's the leg opposite to angle A? Over the hypotenuse, that's A over C. Okay. Now, sine is abbreviated S-I-N, Never sin, always sine, okay? All right, so if you wanted to find the sine of A, all you would do is identify where A is. Now you say, okay, opposite leg, that one. Hypotenuse, that one. A over C, that's the ratio. Now, cosine. Cosine is abbreviated COS, never cos, always cosine. Cosine of A is the ratio of the adjacent side to the hypotenuse. So you go to the adjacent side of A, that's B over C. Okay, B over C. Now that leaves the tangent. So we did A with C, B with C. Which ones did we not do? A and B. Well, the opposite over the adjacent, that's the tangent of A, abbreviated as T-A-N, never tan, always tangent, and it's A over B, okay? Now, suppose I wanted to find not sine of A, but sine of B. 
Okay? Sine is what? Opposite over hypotenuse. All right? So look at angle B. Which one is the side opposite to B? Lowercase b. And which one is the hypotenuse? C. Okay? So do you see how the term opposite changes for A and for B? Okay? All right. Now, there is a cute little um, mnemonic to help you remember, and it's called Sokatoa. Sokatoa. Have you guys heard that before? All right. So um, this is how it's split up, right? So Sokatoa means sine is opposite over hypotenuse, cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, and tangent is opposite over adjacent. Okay? So just by saying Sokatoa, you could say, oh, ka, cosine, adjacent and hypotenuse. Okay? Toa, oh, tangent, opposite and adjacent. All right. So let's do a little bit of work here. All right. Here we have a triangle, <clears throat> so, um, angles RST. We want to find sine and cosine and tangent for R and S. We never find um, sine, cosine, tangent for the 90 degree angle. It's always one of the acute angles, okay? All right. So it says express each ratio as a decimal, as a fraction and as a decimal rounded to four decimal places if necessary. Now I'll come back to this in a, in a second. All right, so here's what we're going to do. So I just put up here, so ka toa okay now i'm looking for the trig ratios for angle r okay so what i do is i circle angle r and until you really get the hang of it label the sides now which one is the hypotenuse here the five label that one first get it out of the way because that's never going to be one of your opposite or adjacent now in reference to r which one is the opposite leg the four, that means this is the adjacent leg, okay? Now, sine, sine is opposite over hypotenuse. Well, opposite is four, hypotenuse is five, so this is just four to five, okay? And I'll deal with the decimals in a little bit. Now we need cosine, that's adjacent and hypotenuse, so what over what? 3 to 5, right? 3 over 5. And what about tangent? Opposite over adjacent is 4 over 3. Now, decimals. In the world of trig, whenever we want to express a ratio in decimals, we always, always, always go to four decimal places. That's the accepted norm, and we don't stray from that. Four decimal places, always rounded correctly, please, rounded correctly. Now, the only other exception is if you have something like 1 to 2. What is that in decimal? It's 0 0.5, and there are a, that's, a, that's an ending decimal, right? It just ends, so you just say 0 0.5. You don't have to say 0 0.5000. So that's the only case. Or if you have 3 over 4, 0. 0.75. But any other case, if it's a repeating or non-ending decimal, must go to 4 decimal places. All right, so how much is 4 over 5? If you plug it in. So you literally say 4 divided by 5. It's 0. 0.8, and that's a, that's a decimal that ends. So you just say 0. 0.8. You don't have to add zeros to fill up the 4 space, spaces. So how much is 3 over 5? 0 0.6 and how much is 4 over 3 that's 1 and 1 thirds that's 1.3333 no bar that's middle school okay um, and it has to be rounded properly so for example if it was 1.66666 it would what would the last digit be 7 okay all right so now we're going to have to find the ones for s to do that, I no longer am going to take my angle as R. Now it's S. 
So what happens when I do that? Will opposite and adjacent stay where they are? No, they're going to switch, right? So now the 3 is the opposite, and this is the adjacent. Well, what about the hypotenuse? Same. Okay, so what are we going to get for sine of s? 3 over 5, which is 0 0.6. Cosine of s? 4 over 5, which is 0 0.8. Are you guys really going to let Ryan, like, bust out his vocal cords here? Nobody's going to come to his rescue. Tangent of s? 3 over 4, which is 0 0.75. Now, patterns. Do you see a pattern? Do you see a connection? What do you see? The sine and the cosine switch, not a coincidence. I mean, this is, this is not just a coincidence. This is how it is, all right? So, for any triangle, sine of one of the angles is the same as cosine of the other angle. This is the beauty of all of this, okay? Sine of S, cosine of R. What about the tangents? There, one is the reciprocal of the other, yes? Awesome. Like, beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Sine of one of the acute angles is the cosine of the other one, and vice versa. <clears throat> okay, now, for this one, you're going to need your um, scientific calculators. Make sure, and for the people at home, make sure that you bring your scientific calculators to class with you every single day. Now, I have um, the graphing one here, but it's, it's fine. So on your calculators, what I would like you to do is um, find the sign button, okay? And that's four. Okay, so it's in the fourth row, fourth row, all right? Just like in this one, it's in the fourth row. Now, um, I want you to put in let me just check something here. All right. So I want you to put in sine 57 for this one. So sine and 57. Close the parentheses. Enter. And you should all get that number. So do it. And if you don't get that number, um, let me know, actually, if you don't get that number. Did everybody, did everybody get that one? Okay. If you don't get that number, if you get something else, it may be that your calculator is in radian mode as opposed to degree mode, and um, you have to change it to degree mode. So this is going to be 0 0.838, what, 7. Okay. All right, so let's do the next one, which is cosine of 60. So here, cosine of 60, what does that give us? 0 0.5, and it's just 0 0.5, okay? And let's do the other two. So let's do tangent of 30. What do we get? Um, and then we have sine of 85, 0.9962. Hmm? Um, there was a, a group of mathematicians at some point, and they decided that that's how it was going to be. Yeah. All right, so we were talking in part B here about cosine of 60. Now, did we have to really plug that into the calculator? So, you know, you're walking down the street, somebody taps you on the shoulder and says, hey, what's cosine of 60? What do you do? Well, you take out your little, you know, notepad and your little pencil, and you say, cosine of 60, gee, okay, let's see, that is a 
30, 60, 90 triangle. Right? Now, suppose this side, the short leg, is 1. What would that make the other side, the other leg? This side. If it's a 30, 60, 90. If this is 1, then this is 1 times radical 3. And this is 2 times 1. Okay? So now, if I wanted the cosine of 60, if this is 60, and I want the adjacent over the hypotenuse, what would that be? 1 over 2. Okay? Yes? All right, we're going to do a lot more with this. Okay, so um, in example 4, actually, we're going to do a lot more. All right, so let's go here. It says to find the value of x, okay? Now, x here is a missing side. And then it says, round the final answer to the nearest tenth. Now, this is important, and I'll show you in a little bit the difference between rounding to the tenth and rounding to the fourth decimal place. Okay. The way you do this is this. You start with what you have. If you have an angle, then you start with your angle. This is my angle. Okay? In reference to the angle, which two sides am I given? Am I given the hypotenuse? No. no. What side is this? Opposite. This is the opposite side. Which side is this? That's the adjacent side. Now, if I'm given opposite and adjacent, okay, between the Soka Toa, if I'm given opposite and adjacent, that means that's tangent, right? So I say this, tangent of something. What's the something? It's always an angle. What's the angle? 24. So tangent of 24 is equal to opposite over adjacent. What's the opposite? X over 19. Okay, so that's the equation that I set up. Now I have to solve for X. So if I have to solve for X, what do I have to do? Multiply both sides by what? 19. And here I multiply by 19. These two cancel, so what do I have left? X is equal to 19 tangent of 24. Now, can we plug that into the calculator? We sure can. So you literally, you just say 19 tangent of 24, enter, and that's your answer. We're going to round to the nearest decimal, uh, tenth, so it's 8.5. Okay. Well, but there is a reason. So what we were doing in example two is we were just finding straight out the sine of an angle or the cosine of an angle. For that, we round to four decimal places. Here, we're not just doing that, you know, as a random exercise. We're actually looking for a side, which is a physical quantity, right? So we go to one decimal place. Okay. So look at this one. Where is the angle I'm given? The 62. In reference to the 62, which two sides am I given? What side is this? Opposite, adjacent, or hypotenuse? That's the adjacent. What about the 60? Hypotenuse. So if I have adjacent and hypotenuse, which ratio is it? Cosine. Okay, I'll, I'll come take a look right now. So cosine of 62 equals x over 60. Now what do I multiply by? 60, 60, these go away. So x is 60 cosine 62, which is how much? 28.2. Okay? All right. For this one, we have to use a special right triangle to express each of these, right? So now it asks you for tangent of 30. 
For that, you have to draw a 30, 60, 90 triangle. So let's draw a 30, 60, 90 triangle. 30, 60, 90. Okay? Now, you know that this is the short side, the short leg, and this is the long leg. You can label them as X for this one. And if the short leg is x, how big is the longer leg? x root 3. And this is 2x. Now, if I want the tangent, that means I want opposite over adjacent. So tangent of 30 is opposite over adjacent. The x's cancel and they always will. So you're left with 1 over root 3, which is equal to root 3 over 3. All right? Now we want sine of 60. So let me do this. Let me draw another triangle. I'm going to draw it this way this time. Suppose you make this your 60 and this your 30. Okay, just a little variety. Okay? Now, where is the short leg? It's on the bottom, right? Now, I'm not going to call it x this time. I'm just going to call it 1. Why? Because I can do that. And if that's 1, how big is the other leg? Radical 3. And how big is the hypotenuse? 2. Okay? Now, if I want the sine of 60, that's opposite over what? Opposite over hypotenuse. And so sine of 60 is equal to root 3 over 2. And that's your answer. Okay? Huh? <coughs> it doesn't matter where you put your 30, 60. What matters is once you've identified which one your 30 and which one your 60 is, you have to label the sides accordingly. So make sure you label the shortest side, you know, the shortest side. Yeah. <clears throat> All right, now, inverse trigonometric values. So, so far, we had we were given a triangle, and we had one of the sides missing, and, you know, it was, you know, very cute. We did this trig ratio, we found the missing side, and we were done. But what if you're missing not the side, but the angle? When you have a missing angle, okay, then you have to use something else. All right. So look at this one. I have an equation, sine of A is equal to this. So I've got some mysterious angle. And I took the sine of it, it gave me this. Now we have to go backwards and figure out what this mysterious angle was. All right? To do that, here's what we do. So I have sine of A is equal to 0 0.4325, right? And I wrote that like that on purpose. All right, so if you have 3x is equal to 5, what do you do to solve for x? You divide by 3 because 3 times x, it's being multiplied, you do the inverse, which is division, right? To get rid of the multiplication. What we're going to do here is the inverse of this one. What gets rid of sine? Well, inverse sine, of course. You take inverse sine of this whole thing. Okay? Now, whatever you do on this side, so if you divide by 3 on this side, you must do the same on that side. So you do inverse sine of this. Okay? Inverse is denoted by this exponent of negative 1. What this essentially does is get rid of the sign for us. So A here is equal to inverse sine of that number. And now you plug that in your calculator. How do you plug it in your calculator? You have to do second or shift sign. You see how right above the sign it says sine to the power of negative 1? So you do shift sign. You put in your decimal. 
And that's your angle, 25.6. Okay, so that's how you would do these. Um, go ahead and try. Oh, look at look at all these like missing stuff here, like these random. All right, so go ahead and you know give this a try. You should be able to do most of the inverse trig functions as well. All right, and we'll pick up from this, and I'll give you a practice quiz next time. Okay, twenty-five point six. Okay.